come to the British Library today. We've just sat through an extremely interesting talk that was given by Chris Laverty and Amber Bouchard, uh, great fashion historians that they are. Now we've been enthralled by the uh, 19th and 20s of fashion history, uh, we're going to go inside another bit of the, uh, the British Library here and um, take part in and have a look at uh, a party being hosted by the Vintage Mafia. There's going to be entertainments from Alex Mendham and his orchestra and uh, I believe there's going to be some hairstyling, makeup, that sort of thing by Pretty Me Vintage. This is Kieran Spooner for the Vintage News. Hello, I'm here with Amber Budchart, who is one of the speakers tonight. How have you enjoyed the evening so far? Oh, it's been brilliant. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I really enjoyed the talk. We had some great questions afterwards. I really enjoyed Chris's talk as well. It's been really brilliant to get to meet, like to work with Chris in real life, because we speak a lot on Twitter, but I've only just really met him through doing this event, so that's been really nice as well. Okay. So could you give me a bit of a sort of a rundown of what your talk is about? Sure. Um, I was basically discussing um, fashion in film in the sort of 1920s and 30s, and the way that it sort of shifted as the Depression kicked in, and also as sound kicked in, because the two things were kind of almost concurrent, really, the two things happening. And they both had a big effect on the way that fashion was used within the film industry, so that's really what I was talking about. Okay. Um, yeah, that fits in very nicely with what Chris was talking about, about the, the dandy gangster. So yeah. The same sort of time period. Um, also, I'd like to talk to you about your new book, um, oh, yeah. Fashion Miscellany. Um, we just had a review of it on our website. Yes, I really thank enjoyed you very it. Much. And thank if anyone hasn't read the review yet, could you uh, tell us what the book is about? Sure. Well, it's basically, I mean, it's a miscellany. So it's kind of a compilation of different sort of oddities and facts all about clothing throughout history, really. Um, so it's things about sort of like digital fashion, like fashion online, through to things about, you know, the Sun King in France and his love of high heels for himself, I hasten to add. Um, so yeah, it really just covers lots of different kinds of areas, little different tidbits, some information on sort of terms and techniques uh, for production or printing. Just a really wide range of like sort of little facts and snippets of information. At the moment, I'm writing a book about the history of nautical style. So um, I've got about a month left to go on that. So I'm sort of stuck down heavily into sort of fishermen and sailors um, reading about occupational clothing, uniform, and then it's transition into fashionable dress. Uh, I'm about to start my final chapter, which is pirates. So I'm quite looking forward to that. It will be very different to the rest of the book. Um, so that's what I'm working on at the moment. How are you finding this evening? It's excellent, thank you. And you were you were in from the very beginning on, yes. on the tour. Yes. So how did you find that? Very, very interesting. I love the way they discussed the fashions of the 1920s. In fact, the, the silent film stars didn't actually have, in the early stages, their costumes uh, designed for them. They had to supply their own. Uh, people like uh, Gloria Swanson was spotted, talent spotted, because of what she wore, which she's brought in because of what she wears, into doing some film work, because because of the clothes and then she features her own clothing in her early films. I must admit actually that's how we spotted Sadie. We thought she always looks great, she should be in front of our camera. Indeed. When you're styling yourself, that's when you want people to spot you because you've done it yourself. And that's in early days of Hollywood, they were town spotted because of how they looked on the street. Alex Mendham, that's quite a coup for the after party, ah, Indeed, isn't it? indeed, because he, he is a, he is the top quality. His orchestra are the best. So to get them to perform here this evening for the after party is superb. What, is, what a coup on their part. Uh, I can't express how lucky I am to be here because not only do you get the talk, they included the after party, the most perfect entertainment they possibly provide. It's, it's period perfect. Hello, I'm here with Christopher Laverty from Clothes on Film. How have you enjoyed the evening so far? Oh, it's been fantastic. It's been incredibly busy. It seems like a lot of people really want to talk about the talks basically there was I think we could have both talked for another half hour each and still not said enough but it's been a real enthusiasm people have got really excited about just it's the kind of it's the vibe I think they get most excited about rather than specific things it just is seeing the sort of the costumes from years ago and the fashions from years ago and the fact that they are so different to now but people just want to talk about them and enjoy them again my talk was was all about really Borbork Empire but 
the main thrust of the talk was what these guys wore, what these gangsters in this show wore. And we don't realize, because you see the old black and white photos of gangsters, and you have you tend to think of them wearing like dark pinstripe suits. They actually wore riotous color, red suits, yellow shirts. And that's kind of what I wanted to really explain to people, that color is masculine. And to prove it, look at these real tough guys wearing it. So the clothes on the film blog has been featured in countless sort of best of blogs. Um, what prompted you to start writing it in the first place? The reason I started writing clothes on film was really because no one else was talking about costume in film and it was something I happened to know about. So I just put my thoughts on there. I mean, to be honest, work was kind of dry at the time, so I just started spilling my thoughts out. It was a whole blogging revolution was kind of going on then, but um, yeah, people really jumped on it. So I see, saw that you wrote me on the um the Hollywood costume book. How did that come about? Oh, that, that was a real privilege to be in a Hollywood costume book. Uh, Deborah Landis, who was curator of the whole thing, she uh, got in contact with me. She actually initially got in contact with me a few years ago to, to complain about my blog because of the title. She wanted it to be called Costume on Film. But um, she got over that and she got back in contact and said she just, she wanted me to give it a modern angle, the sort of web angle. And then we, we chatted a bit and it was kind of, it just went from there really, it was, I wasn't massively involved in the exhibition but I, I was sort of involved in the books. Um, one thing you touched on in your talk was the colour mm. and a lot of the costumes you see in the black and white movies and you don't think of their colour. Yeah, you have no idea and I, I believe Amber touched on it in her talk about the makeup mm. that one of the actresses was wearing, it had to be yellow just to sort of show up the way they wanted it to. Yeah. And that's actually really interesting because uh, when I speak to costume designers, they often explain that if something is shot in black and white, recently the artist, I believe Mark Bridges actually had a, something in a different color to make it look black. I'm not specifically sure what it was. But yeah, it's a real eye opener when you go there and you're like, I had no idea that that was purple or no idea that, that was red. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a shame really for the costume designers, isn't it? I'm going to continue putting clothes on film out there and covering as much as I can. Hopefully a book in a pipeline. Um, but I can't really say too much about that yet. But, okay, yeah. you heard it here first. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. So just covering as much as I can. And just, I like creating interest in the whole subject. It just excites me to excite other people about it. I'm here with Mina. Now, you've, um, you were in the, in the talk earlier yes, on. Yes, I was. So, I mean, that was interesting. But was there anything new that came out of that for you? Well, the thing that really fascinated me was the, the idea of a kind of continuity in the way that gangsters dress and the way that men show their status, like peacocks. We always think of men wearing very sort of low-key clothes and looking the same. But the flamboyance in colours that you don't see in black and white photographs amused me highly because I did have that image of the 20s as a black and white era. The thing with the 20s, 1910s and 20s, is in, I studied art history and it's when a lot of the new artificial dyes appeared. So there were colours in clothing that never appeared in neckties and things. So I find that quite natural. So I think the thing about men's clothing fascinated me. And the thing that never occurred to me was uh, Mr. Lavity's obsession with the checks and suits matching. And I've subsequently spent the whole evening looking at everyone's jackets. He, he checked mine, apparently mine's pretty good. I was most happy with that. Yes. Of all of the things that were said tonight, the one most important thing that you took from it was what? That male clothing in the 20s was often within certain groups, and perhaps to some degree throughout society, far more colourful than we imagine because we're limited by the fact that we look at black and white photography and black and white films. We've had a wonderful time here at the British Library at Puddin' on the Glitz. Um, two brilliant talks from Amber Bouchart and Christopher Laverty. The amazing party hosted by the Vintage Mafia with music from the Alex Mendham Orchestra and hair and makeup by Pretty Me Vintage. Everyone is beautifully dressed and had an amazing time and I hope this means there are going to be lots more collaborations between these various people putting on lots of lovely parties. This is Sadie Doherty for the Vintage News.